Evacuees were arriving by the truckload in Northeast Houston on Tuesday. Grandparents, children, pets, even a deer. Once on drier ground, Miss Billy didn't know what was happening next. Where are you gonna go now? I, I don't know. Their homes border Lake Houston and are now accessible only by boat. About 30 miles upriver at Lake Conroe, historic levels have forced authorities to release water at nearly the same rate as Niagara Falls. Cell phone video shows the powerful flood water rushing down the San Jacinto River. The force was strong enough to sweep away an entire concrete barrier along Interstate 69. Officials are anticipating uncontrollable overflow at two reservoirs west of downtown Houston. The water will eventually feed into Buffalo Bayou. That is the small tributary that winds through central Houston and is now a sprawling body of water. With the rainfall still occurring in downstream reaches of Buffalo Bayou and tributaries, as well as in discharge of water from Attucks and Barker, and it may still take several days for it to recede. Officials told people to get out now when water breached a levee on the Brazos River yesterday. Okay. But for many people, getting out isn't so simple. Somebody else called the number that was to come pick everybody up yesterday and they never showed up. Latika LaShawn Thomas flagged down one of our producers yesterday. She and her two daughters have been stuck in their apartment in South Houston since Friday. They've run out of everything, but not faith. That's all I have now because I'm at my my breaking point is faith. I know God is going to see us through this. I mean, <laughs> he has to. Drones have captured images of flooded highways, streets covered with water, an entire city brought to a standstill. The contrast is especially striking in these before and after photos, a vivid picture of just how much Houston has been transformed by the rising waters. In crisis situations like this, especially for natural disasters, there's a lot that can happen with the pets and people's lives. First, any you know, any animal that's astray and is alone on the street, they, they don't have anywhere to go and anyone anyone to watch out for them. And um, second, some people try to evacuate with their animals and not all evacuation centers or shelters will allow people to take pets in with them. So well, I know. We're seeing some people who weren't able to evacuate in time and they're having to leave their animals behind. And that's, you know, a terrifying situation for anyone who loves an animal or who has pets. We have 430 who have been emergency evacuated from the area. More are coming in every day. We have another 50 to 100 expected over the next 24 hours. From the federal emergency management agency which is dealing with the situation there and they're saying that more than 195,000 people have already registered to receive assistance from the federal emergency management agency and 30,000 people are currently being housed in 230 shelters that is uh, according to the latest official figures coming in so that's 195,000 people already registering for help as a result of those floods and let's take a look at some of the other numbers behind the storm which has left so many people displaced it has broken a new rainfall record for the US continent with 51.88 inches of rain since the 28th of August 14 trillion liters of water has dropped from Storm Harvey and with another 5 trillion litres expected to come. According to regulatory filings submitted to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, damage from Hurricane Harvey may have released as much as 2 million pounds of potentially hazardous airborne pollutants from oil refineries and other facilities in the Houston area. In some cases, the estimated amounts released vastly exceed legal limits. The state agency can't confirm how many contaminants have been released because air quality monitoring stations throughout the area were shut down prior to Harvey's landfall. 
Hurricane Harvey has brought flooding and some horrifying creatures, according to RedState.com. The flooding is so bad that alligators are infested in the waters and cars even climbing backyard fences. There's also huge mounds of fire ants floating down highways and catfish are reported in people's living rooms. Texas and parts of Louisiana are still dealing with catastrophic flooding from Tropical Storm Harvey, which is still dumping rain in many areas. But forecasters are also starting to keep an eye on a new storm that may become the next threat. Tropical Storm Irma. Irma was declared the season's ninth named storm by the National Hurricane Center on Wednesday. The NHC is projecting that the storm could intensify to hurricane status by Friday morning, though it's still too soon to know whether it'll pose a threat to anyone in the Caribbean or U.S. Rescuers in Macau are searching for people trapped in submerged cars after Typhoon Hato rampaged through the Chinese territory, trailing destruction in its wake. The strongest storm since 1968 killed at least nine people, with more still missing. Winds of up to 200 kilometers per hour sent sheets of glass flying and severely damaged water supply in the offshore gambling hub. High-end casinos attempted to carry on as usual, even as their facades were torn away by gales. Although neighboring Hong Kong classed Hato as a level 10 typhoon, Macau rated it at 3 until just a few hours before it hit, leaving the island woefully unprepared. Having also battered Guangdong province, Hato is now expected to weaken as it moves inland over China. Roads have turned into rivers. As desperate families put their belongings on makeshift rafts to reach safety. Parts of eastern and northeastern India have been washed away by rain and floodwaters for weeks now. Hundreds of people have been killed and millions displaced. And even though rain has receded in some parts, people still can't go home. I have eight children. Because of the water, they can't go to school. We're living on the streets here. This is where we stay. This is where we eat. This is the moment a massive landslide struck Pitz Changalo Mountain on Wednesday morning. Four million cubic meters of rock and mud cascaded off the mountain into the valley below. Eight people are now confirmed missing in the small Swiss village of Bondo, near the Italian border. They include German, Austrian and Swiss citizens. There were no other casualties or injuries thanks in part to an alarm system installed in 2012 after a similar devastating rock slide. Authorities say some buildings were badly damaged and around 200 people were forced to evacuate their homes. Trying to make sense of her loss. Up until now, Mata Kamara had held back her tears, trying to appear strong to her nine-year-old daughter, Miriam. Her father saved their lives. After days of torrential rain, he told them to leave the house the night before the landslide, sensing something could go wrong. He died praying with dozens of others for the rain to stop when an avalanche of mud buried at the church he was in. Mata is nine months pregnant. I wish I could find a place to lay to rest for me and my child. Suddenly our protector, my daughter's father, disappeared. God acted without warning. There hasn't been a landslide before and no one living here expected it to happen. Yet they were warned. Sierra Leone's Environmental Protection Agency told residents to stop cutting down trees and building homes just two weeks before the disaster. A study released Wednesday found that at least 50 million people in Pakistan are at risk for arsenic poisoning from contaminated water. Arsenic is a naturally occurring element sometimes found in soil. In high doses, it can cause cancers, skin disorders, abnormal heart rhythms, and even death. There is no cure for arsenic poisoning. 
Experts say levels of the pollutant along the Indus River are much higher than the levels determined safe by the World Health Organization. Pakistan has been struggling to provide clean water access. A 2016 survey of almost 3,000 water sources in the country found around 70 to 80 percent of them contain water that was contaminated or unsafe for drinking. And thanks to a population boom over the past few decades, farmers have begun overpumping groundwater. They have to use more water than is typically necessary due to outdated infrastructure, and that can lead to arsenic contamination in underground aquifers. A fast-moving wildfire destroyed several homes and forced the evacuation of residents in Northern California on Tuesday. The fire burned 1,000 acres in Butte County, about 85 miles north of Sacramento. At least nine houses were destroyed. Photos on social media showed the fire turning houses into ash as smoke billowed into the sky and flames ripped through trees and vegetation. A mandatory evacuation order was placed on residents who live in the remote area. A vast chunk of the Amazon rainforest that was protected for over 30 years now open to mining. The area, larger than Denmark, is thought to have significant reserves of copper, gold and iron ore. The government says allowing and regulating mining there would stamp out illegal operations destroying the forest. It insists that protected areas and indigenous land will not be affected, and it's now promised a new decree spelling out these protections. The prospect of a gold rush in this fragile area has sparked overwhelming criticism from lawmakers and environmentalists alike. Even supermodel Giselle Bündchen has accused the government of auctioning the Amazon. Dentro da barriga da chuva, Claudineia dos Santos Melo, de 29 anos, estava grávida nove meses quando uma bala perdida a atingiu. Thousands of Rohingya Muslims are escaping the violence in Myanmar by crossing the border to Bangladesh as fresh fighting erupts in northwestern Rakhine State, according to the government. The death toll from the violence that began on Friday has climbed to 98. The clashes, the worst since at least October, have prompted the government to evacuate staff and thousands of non-Muslim villagers from the area. Reporters from Reuters news agency say hundreds of Rohingya are crossing into Bangladesh near the border village of Gumdum. Some of them are killed along the way. One of my sons was lost while crossing the border, says this man. We could not tolerate the torture of the Myanmar government. They killed our people. Bodies were lying there. We were helpless there. The government's people burned our houses. They also killed our small children. How can we live there? On Friday, national leader Aung San Suu Kyi condemned the raids, but the treatment of more than a million Muslim Rohingya in mainly Buddhist Myanmar has emerged as the biggest challenge for the Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Japan and the United States have requested an urgent meeting of the UN Security Council later today after North Korea fired a missile that flew over Japan. The missile flew over the island of Hokkaido before it crashed into the sea off the country's east coast. Well, the launch prompted an alert and people were told to take cover in basements or in concrete buildings. The Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said the launch was an unprecedented, serious and grave threat to his nation. North Korea has fired rockets over Japan twice in the past, once in 1998 and again in 2009. But on those occasions, Pyongyang claimed that they were satellite launches, not weapons. Just before midnight, Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson tweeted that he was outraged by what he called North Korea's reckless provocation. Meanwhile, the Chinese government says the United States and South Korea are partly responsible for pressuring North Korea questioning whether all parties were pushing for peace. Our correspondent Yogita Lamai reports on the latest North Korean missile launch.
Japan being woken up by a siren on Tuesday morning as a North Korean missile flew over the country. The rocket was launched from near Pyongyang and it flew over the northern island of Hokkaido before splitting into three parts and landing into the sea to the east. It's just the latest in a series of military missile tests conducted by North Korea this year, but a more serious one because it flew over Japan. The last time that happened was nearly two decades ago. Their outrageous act of firing a missile over our country is an unprecedented, serious and grave threat, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said. At a U.S. base near Tokyo, a military drill was conducted by Japanese forces in response to the missile launch. Across the sea in South Korea, joint exercises are underway with American troops. They are held every August and North Korea usually responds with a show of strength. Last year, it conducted a nuclear test in retaliation. This year, it's flown a missile that had the potential to cause serious harm. A strong message that despite international pressure, Pyongyang has no intention to stop. You can imagine people waking up here to the sound of air raid sirens and being told to find shelter in concrete buildings or basements is not a normal occurrence. Uh, for people in Japan. In fact, as far as I'm aware, I think this is the first time this has happened perhaps since the Second World War. People have been practicing the last few months in towns up and down the coast of Japan because of the increased uh, number of missile tests by North Korea. But this is the first time that it's happened for real. That you know, The public address system is being used to tell people there's a missile flying in our direction, find shelter. So this is a very serious and very aggressive thing for North Korea to do. Countries do not normally fire ballistic missiles across the territory of their neighbors. And that's why we've seen this very angry uh, response from the Japanese government, from Prime Minister Abe, calling this an act of violence, saying it's unprecedented, uh, and uh, speaking to President Trump and them together, saying they will now take this to the UN Security Council and demand action from you know, the world community, especially from countries like China and Russia. Hundreds of additional troops have been sent in to al ayadir to support Iraqi coalition forces who are facing fierce resistance from ISIL militants. The fighting in the small town 11 kilometers northwest of Tal Afar has been described by some Iraqi soldiers as being multiple times worse than the battle for Mosul. Peshmerga forces in the area say around 150 so-called Islamic State members and their families have surrendered themselves. This Peshmerga major says, in fact, these displaced people who turn themselves in are not displaced people at all. They're Islamic State members and they wore explosive belts, and these are the belts in front of you. While the ferocious fighting near the city of Tal Afar is going on in Iraq, in neighboring Syria, busloads of militants and their families, headed for IS-held Del Al-Azor, have been deliberately blocked by U.S. airstrikes. The convoy is part of a ceasefire agreed after offensives last week on the Syrian-Lebanese border. But the deal has been criticized by the U.S.-led coalition and Iraq, as the destination of the IS members is territory close to where Iraqi forces are engaged. The Saudi-led coalition has long been accused of conducting airstrikes against Houthi targets in Yemen with no regard for how many civilians they kill in the process. On Monday, the Saudi ambassador to the UN pushed back against charges. The coalition has been reckless. The uh, level of casualties is unacceptably high. Any single life lost in this conflict is a life too many. So we would, we would certainly agree with that and our effort to continuously try to improve our procedures and our conduct of the, uh, uh, of the conflict uh, is, is ongoing and, and, and will not stop. But then on Wednesday, a coalition airstrike reportedly aimed at a Houthi checkpoint leveled a hotel north of the capital, Sana'a. Dozens of farm workers said to be the victims. As the UN tries to confirm these reports, this reaction. We have been told on a number of occasions by, uh, by the coalition that they do uh, their utmost uh, to, avoid, uh, to avoid civilian casualties. What we see continuing in the conflict in Yemen is that the parties to the conflict are inflicting a huge toll on the Yemeni people.